My name is Howard Stevenson. I'm a, the Constance Clayton Professor of Urban Education at the University of Pennsylvania in the Graduate School of Education um, in the Applied Psychology Division. In the work that I'm doing um, with regard to research on how to build the health of boys, young men of color and their families, um, we've used storytelling as a way to promote healing, promote identity development, uh, promote the socialization of race and um, the impact that talking to children about race has on well-being. And in the process of, I'd say, 27 years of working with families, stories become um, very powerful. And in, I'm amazed at how many families have kept their story secrets secret, um, particularly stories around um, racism, stories around um, cultural practices to uh, combat racism. And in working with young people, I'm also amazed at how many of them are dying to know what their parents have gone through in life. And so in our projects over the course of those 27 years, we, we believe in this African proverb that goes, the lion story will never be known as long as the hunter is the one to tell it. And part of that reflects the power of um, spin and sort of uh, stereotype and false narratives about a people, particularly people of color, in which their history has been eradicated, their strengths have been distorted, their culture has been demonized. And in storytelling, we all have the opportunity to rewrite the negative narratives about our communities, about our people. If you look at the research on storytelling, storytelling is much more influential than facts and figures. The brain is actually much more ready to hear a story than it is simple facts. Perhaps it's something about the context. Perhaps it's something about um, an, a story that's unfolding as it's being told but um, the brain actually appears to be much more prepared to, to take in information when stories are told. And one argument as to why that's the case is that as an individual hearing a story, I can actually insert myself into it in a way that I can't when it comes to facts and figures. Even if it's a tragic story, I could see myself as a hero or heroine and promote myself in a way to be a hero to solve a problem that seems insurmountable. So it's easier to handle tension, easier to handle tragedy. It's also important to realize that stories invite us to see how we are like other people or that other people's difference is not as scary to us or threatening to us as we once thought. Stories humanize us. They put us in the same place. If I can identify with another person's story, I in fact can avoid the unfortunate and tragic reality that happens to many young, young people of color, is that, and that's dehumanizing, dehumanization. So um, stories are powerful on a, a number of levels. Um, what I also like is when, uh, in some of our work, where we actually, we call it um, old heads, school and young boys, school and old heads, where we have elders uh, in barbershops, for example, black barbershops, who come together with young people to talk about trauma. In the process, we give room for each side to talk about their life experiences. It's amazing and transformative to hear when someone shares a piece of themselves without blaming, without um, excusing, just simply sharing pain it's amazing how young people are ready to listen to those stories and to respond in kind. And uh, it's that healing transformation that we're interested in. Um, and our hope is to continue um, where we can unearth secrets um, because those secrets are, are a threat to well-being, to hold in trauma, to hold in pain, particularly for boys and young men of color we've learned that uh, releasing that pain is, is healthy, not only for them, but the people they define as their partners or relationships. So the lion story will never be known as long as a hunter is the one to tell it. 
um, is, a, is a model we live by.